Ryan Garcia is back. Ryan Garcia knocks out Oscar Duerta in fashion, a very, very aggressive opponent. And Ryan Garcia hushes all the haters, including Shakur Stevenson. Ryan looked good out there, and he looked like Ryan Garcia that we all know. There's a lot that we learned from this fight, so let's get right into the show. A lot of drama, I think, with Ryan the last few days or the last few weeks, two weeks, um... Uh, with the thing with Oscar and, and him saying things about Shakur, things about him, uh, how he was injured during Tank. You know, there there's a lot of things that he said, very vocal, and um, some good, some things uh, people have taken, good, made him good things, bad things, you know, just, just a lot. There's a lot going on there with Ryan. So, um, I, I want to bring that up because he had an amazing performance, uh, close to flawless. Um, you could say flawless with uh, a lot of work to do, but he had probably one of his best performances in a long time. So, and then, like I said, I want to bring all these things up because Ryan Garcia, you know, one thing that I was thinking about the last, like the last few days, he, he's been going through a lot and, and I don't know if it's, you know, because of him or because of people, I don't know. Right. But, um, you know, in his personal life, uh, there's been things kind of wishy-washy and, and decisions that uh, he probably shouldn't have done. Um, and the the coaching changes, this is his third coach, I think, in uh, the last, what, three years or four years, if I'm not mistaken. Moving to Dallas, uh, cutting people off, apparently, the whole thing with Oscar uh, De La Hoya. Um, I don't know, man. It, it just seems like he's kind of fed up with everything. So, um I don't know if he's, he, he, I don't know, like I said, I just want to bring these up because he had a performance um, just flawless. And, and I was just surprised that he was able to handle all these things and especially in being vocal about it and, and, you know, seeing good things or bad things on social media. I'm sure he was on his phone, you know, like disrespecting Oscar or, you know, just shit like that. There, there's just a lot going on. So I, I just want to give a lot of props to Ryan for that because, you know, I don't think it's an easy thing to do. But anyways, let's talk about the fight itself. Um, both, I mean, I knew Oscar was going to come out hot. Like, it, it was pretty obvious. He comes like that every fight, no question. So uh, my thing was, how was Ryan going to be able to handle a, such a pressure fighter? Because I think, you know, his his recent fights or a lot of his fights, he's not getting pressed like that. And, and there's not a lot of fighters that that press heavily like like Oscar. There's not many fighters like that. So I was just like, kind of, man, we'll, we'll see how he does, whatever. So he was getting, you know, pushed back, fighting off that back foot a lot and um, showing us a really, a really, and I'm sorry, Ryan, but a really ugly uh, shoulder roll, to be honest with you. I was like, bro, what is he doing? You know, and, and the commentary wasn't a fan of that either. So um, pretty weird to see. But anyways, um, he, he catches Oscar a lot of times coming in. And I, I want to say it was like round four or five, Oscar had his best round. And, and Ryan was just looking not there. And um, I think we're going into the sixth or the seventh there where there's that moment where Derek Jane, James, I hope I said his name correctly. I hope I got it right. But his trainer, his coach tells him, you know, hey, you got to do this. You got to do that. Um, I wish I, I don't want to say I don't know word for word, but uh, he, he goes in there. It, t it tells Ryan this in, during in his corner. And I want to say that same round or the next round is when he gets a knockout. And, and it was the exact instructions that his coach told him to do. Um, I, I remember I, it was something along the lines like, hey, when you're moving, throw, you know. And then on top of that, when Oscar, I forgot whether his shoulders were when they're like this, um, he's not going to throw anything or something, something like that. Right. But it's, he told him something like that. And, and the discipline that Ryan has to listen to his coach, trust his coach. And start fighting like fighting like this, and I think that's important for Ryan because I think he's had coaches, and he's probably been the type of fighter that's like, oh, I'm kind of, I'm going to kind of do my own thing, and not really listen to his trainer. Um, I don't know, but there's a reason why this is your third change, whether that's because of you or the team, whatever. But listens to his coach, does what he needs to do, and gets a knockout. Very, very clean knockout. Um, and, I mean, Oscar, he was doing good, and he, I think he's a really good fighter. I really hope they give him more opportunities for bigger fights because he, he looked great in there. But uh, 
you know, that, that beautiful left hook just so fast, so fast. And Oscar just got caught and dude was, was out of it, you know? And, and it, like I said, Ryan just caught him so, so clean. And it was such a nice finish. Um, and, uh, Oh, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. And again, back to what I said earlier, all, all the stuff that Ryan's been going through and to come into this fight, you know, because if he lost this fight, like, it could have been bad so fast, so fast. All the things he said about Shakur, all the interviews and the thing what he said about De La Oya, like, De La Oya would have been right, Shakur would have been right, Tank Davis would have, everybody would have been right but Ryan, you know? And now the only one that was right, is Ryan and everyone else who believed in Ryan. So I think there was a lot of uh, a pressure, you know, there for Ryan, especially after getting the win. It, it, the pressure is gone. But it, it could have been real ugly for Ryan because we gave Shakur a lot of shit for the fight because he talks that shit. And then he goes out and does that weak-ass performance. And everybody, including myself, just fucking went after him. And then now you got Ryan and you got Devin Haney a week from now. So... You know, okay, we, we shit it on Shakur. Now we're going to have a microscope on Ryan Garcia because Ryan Garcia is talking all this stuff about Shakur. Da, 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 da. So we're looking at Ryan and, Ryan and Ryan talks all this mess, saying all this mess. Hey, but look, he backed it up. He looked a little sloppy at times, but he got the win and he got the win by knockout against a guy that was pretty good and caught Ryan with some pretty clean shots. So it's a good look for Ryan. I'm happy for Ryan. Um, You know, he did the fight that he needed to do, and I think there's a lot of work for, for Ryan to do. You know, I think his, uh, his like, when he's being pressured, I know there was times where Oscar was pressuring him and, and pinning him on, like, a corner, <clears throat> and he started, you know, catching Ryan with some nice combos. And, and Ryan just was either stuck, um, and he got out of it at times, but he just didn't respond, right? Like, if he didn't know how to counter at times it, it kind of felt like that was missing from ryan because he was getting hit but it's just like where's the quick jab or or like some movement and then throw a punch but we didn't see that from ryan and i thought you know that that's what makes a good fighter a great fighter like little things like that when you get pinned in the corner it's like okay how are you going to react when you're not controlling the fight and you're getting hit how are you going to respond oh you know, Oscar's probably not, like I said, not the most, the toughest challenge, a very tough challenge, a good test for Ryan. But, you know, you saw that gap or you saw that from Ryan, like, hey, this is missing. Another thing that was missing is his clinch game is fucking horrible. You know, I love Ryan. He's a great fighter, but no action for him in the clinch. Every time they were in the clinch or just like this, Ryan was getting nothing, nothing. And then he just started turning on and doing that weird shit that he was doing. Um, so... Another, I mean, we've seen fighters, you know, get good punches off the clinch, especially when you're you're, you're coming off of just a quick, short hook. Um, Ryan didn't have that. And those were one of the things, like, if you want to be, like, fighting against the best, like Devin Haney, Tank, Tefimo, those guys, uh, Cam uh, what's his name, Lomachenko, you want to fight those guys, you got to, you know, those guys are going to catch you in the clinch, you know, and those guys are going to get the best out of you when they got you pinned down in the corner and they're going to punish you, you know? Luckily for you, Oscar, like I said, is not at that highest level. Well, he'll punish you for those mistakes or for giving those opportunities. But, you know, those are the two things I've noticed about Ryan that need need some work. You know, when he when he's getting punched, he, he needs to be able to counter, at least to get him out of trouble, right? Just, like, boom, get out of there. But, you know... And then in the clinch, same thing as well. Like, if, if I was Oscar, I'm just going to clinch you all day. Like, we're going to clinch it, and we're just going to scrap right here. You know, and, and Ryan, what well, Ryan did really well, and knowing that Oscar is the pressure fighter, not letting him get comfortable in his way of fighting, and, and that's why we saw Ryan just move lateral, left to right the whole ring, just making circles around the ring. Because this guy, Oscar, is going to press you and press you and press you till he gets you pinned down, and he's going to fucking let it rip. Right. And we didn't see that many moments from Oscar. Ha like we didn't have we didn't see him have those moments too much. And and when he did, that's when, you know, those were his best moments. So kudos for Ryan on that, on the game plan, really uh, defensively to to not stay too still for for Oscar and, and constantly be moving the whole fight. But, um, yeah, I mean, overall, Ryan had a great performance. Uh, he looked sharp, like he looked good. Um and, and not to say that he, he, and he has looked sloppy in other fights. I know when he fought, uh, 
there was two guys that he fought that I was like, who are these guys? And uh, just didn't look that good, right, uh, in the ring. Then when he fought Tank, he looked okay. He looked good, but it, it wasn't the best version of Ryan. So, uh, you know, I saw people on Twitter like, what would you grade, you know, Ryan's performance? I, I would give him an A, a 90, 93 out of 100. I think he did phenomenal. I think he, uh, you know, proved everybody wrong. And uh, he showed us that... Uh, he still has it in him, you know. Now I will say, you know, because there's that kind. Of, like I said, Shakur fought like a week, like two weeks ago, and he had all this. Uh, we he had all this backlash, you know. He he fought on the Thursday. He fought, I think, at T-Mobile or MGN. I forgot where he fought, but he fought somewhere. Um, and and what I'm finna get to is that Ryan Garcia fought at Toyota Center, sold it out, and it was off the roof off the roof a lot of noise a lot of chance for both sides for oscar and ryan but say what you want about ryan but people will fucking watch and there's reasons for that he's exciting fast and, and we've seen him get those crazy ko's right and, and as fans you know casual fans hardcore fans whatever as fans we want to see that and of course you know if he comes to your town or close by you're gonna want to go live bro and you want to go see that and this is what happens, like like a fighter like Shakur, you can, I can even say uh, like Devin, uh, but Devin's I think different, but more more like Shakur, right? It, you you have these guys talk all this shit, you know. One guy, yeah, really good defensively, really good with the movement, but I mean, we really haven't seen anything like where we want to watch this guy fight, and that's Shakur. Ryan Garcia may not be fighting at the highest level. He had, you know, he's working his way there, but he's putting out performances. He's doing his best and he's knocking people the fuck out. And, and he's just putting on the show while at, and also putting on a performance. And like that, that's just, that's just how it is, you know, and, and Shakur could be the best boxer, you know, and, and he can just touch and move, touch and move, touch and move. But nobody's going to want to tune into that. And that's just how it is, right? Um, and again, and, and I want to make this comparison because there's a lot of people that are buying, behind Shakur. There's a lot of people that are behind Ryan. Now, skillfully, I, I would like to say, you know, Shakur's probably the better fighter. But for Ryan Garcia, like, who's going to... If Ryan Garcia fought on Thursday, you're getting almost the same amount of volume that you did on Saturday. Almost the same. No question. Ryan Garcia does have that pull. Ryan Garcia can get pay-per-view vibes. Like, he can. He's a star. He can't do it. You know, and I think a lot of people hate on Ryan because of that. It's like, oh, well, his boxing is not all that good. He's just a social media influencer. He's handsome. And he, he just has these knockouts against these cans. Like, people make these reasons why he's not that good. But I will go on and say that I think if Ryan has, you know, if, if he can get his mind right, and stay disciplined and listen and trust his coach and his trainers. I think Ryan could be one of the best boxers, like no question. He's so fast and strong, like, and he's long. His reach is weak. Like he's built for you know to to do what he does, which is get the fast, flashy knockout. Like he's built for that. His body just is built for it. So I mean, he just has to put his mind to it. And then I want to see that from Ryan because you know. He's a guy that a lot of people hate on. I'm like, bro, I just want I want you to prove all these people wrong. I want you to shut up people like Shakur and, and just fucking make a shit ton of money and beat people up. Like I really want to see that from Ryan. So, you know, and, and Ryan may, you know, he looked funny and, and it's funny seeing a guy like Ryan talk that shit and talk crazy, but Ryan's gonna get in there and fight. Like always, always. Every fight that Ryan's had, he he's just been fighting. You know, and he put on he puts on a show all the time. We've seen many fighters, many boxers, and make any type of fighter where they're playing it safe. You know, whether they're going for the takedowns or they're constantly clinching, clinching, where you know they they just punch and move. Like we've seen those type of fighters, and it happens. And those are the boring fights that we don't want to see. You know, and those fighters, unfortunately, like they might be skillful, but you're just not exciting, and nobody wants to watch that. Shakur Stevenson had an interview and he said that Ryan's not good, da da da, which world champions, all this shit. And I'm just like, bro, when we talk about world champions in boxing, like, 
there's just so many belts that are pointless and it, and it's kind of hard to tell when a real champion is a real champion you know the only time i take a champion seriously in boxing is when they're undisputed you know because you have all the belts so no one can have them but you that's when i'm like all right that's the champion now when this guy has you know when there's like five six different belts in a division i'm like bro you got six different champions five different champions you know so Shakur be talking about world champions i'm like bro when you become undisputed undisputed then you can talk some shit about being a world champion right but there's only out of that those handful of guys you know with the ryan garcia tefimo Shakur, devin george cambosis lomachenko out of those guys i think there's only three that's been undisputed and that's devin haney uh tefimo cambosis did it but i don't know you know i think it was a fluke and i want to say lomachenko was undisputed at one point you know tank hasn't been undisputed ryan hasn't Shakur hasn't and when you become undisputed then you're the fucking real deal but that that's just my input um for for ryan i i do want like one of the biggest things for ryan i want him to trust his trainer want to want him to to trust his team and um lastly uh the commentary on, on the fights right um when i was watching shakur fight uh, sean porter was like praising shakur and then like oh yeah he about to turn up oh yeah this is how he fights he starts off slow da 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 you know just riding for his guy talk about ryan just talking mad shit about ryan i don't know what ryan's doing in there ryan needs to do this ryan needs to do that and then you got this and then sean porter and the, the, the zone team were kind of were going back and forth it's just like well what do you want ryan to do you got a pressure fighting coming at you. you're not going to stay still you're going to move left to right like come on you know and then on top of that when when oscar was coming in yeah ryan was catching him a few times with some hooks i mean uh, some uppercuts you know, so it, it's annoying to see that bias in, in commentary. Um, and, and when you see, you know, you see these guys have their own shows on YouTube, whatever, and um, they can be biased all they want. But I think when I'm watching a show or I mean, not a show, a, a fight, a game, a soccer game or a football game, there, there has to be just no bias. We got to praise, you know, fighters or whoever's uh, performing, whether it's a sport like soccer, whatever. Uh, we got to praise them. And when they're not doing good, we'll, we'll say what we got to say at the moment. But I, I just don't like seeing the bias. And, and even in UFC, right, There's just, there just be a lot of bias there. And, and I don't like seeing it in the commentary team. I want to see a very level bias and, and just enjoy the fight. So I just wanted to bring that up because uh, it was pretty hard not to not to catch it last night. Um, but like I said, big W for, for Ryan. Uh, he calls out Roley and says that he lost to that old ass man, which – was pretty fucking funny because I think Roley did got, I think he did get knocked down. Um, I forgot how it happened, but uh, I think he did get knocked down. <laughs> but um, I think a, a fight with him and Roley would be exciting. I think it could be a pay per view event, and I think it would sell a lot of pay per views, a lot of shit talking. So it'll be very funny and very uh, exciting, entertaining, no question. Um, I'm trying to think of other fights for Ryan that could be nice. For, I think a George against George Camposis that would be a really good fight. Um, they're built the same. I know they're talking about him fighting Lomachenko, but I don't see Lomachenko fighting George Campos. Lomachenko gains nothing from winning that fight. Um, the only one that comes out a winner there, if they win, is George Campos. But if Ryan fights George Campos, I think that's uh, not the hardest test, but it gets you like in the conversation. Like If you beat George Campos, who used to be undisputed, uh, beat Tefimo, and, and then lost to Devin twice, you know, it, it, it's a good look, I think, for Ryan. So I think he should go for George Cambosis or uh, Rolly Romero would be a good fight as well. Um, last thing I want to say about boxing, I want to talk about Tank real quick because I see a lot of people talking about Tank and how Tank, you know, is the face of boxing and take this, tank that, tank, you know, tank, 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 right? Um, I, I go on and say this, you know, Tank probably is one of the best boxers in the world, no question. Um, probably in the top five. For the face of boxing, top five for pound for pound. But we will never see Tank fight a fair fight. You know, we will never see Tank not have any stipulations on a contract when fighting somebody. He's going to have a rehydration clause or it's going to be a weight thing or he'll catch a guy who's not recovered fully. Um, He's he's a uh, what I don't know what the word is, but the way Tank fights is is. His mindset and the way he approaches fights 
it's exactly like how Mayweather did, right? He would fight guys with, you know, hydration clauses. He fought Pacquiao past his prime, uh, things like that. You know, you're not going to, I don't think we're ever going to see Tank Davis fight the best version of Devin Haney, the best version of Tefimo, the best version of um, Lomachenko, the best version of possibly Ryan. Like, we're never going to see those fights with Tank. And I think that's what's going to be, like, or that's going to suck as a fan because I want to see really how good is Tank. Like, how good is he? You know, like, if him and Devin Haney fought right now, how would that fight be? Like, I would want to see that, right? How would him and Tefimo, like, how would that fight be? I would want to see that right now, right? Not if Tefima goes and loses a few fights. Not if Devin Haney loses the belt. I want to see it right now with the highest stakes. When, when they've like fought at the highest level they, they've shown us, I, that's when I want to see those fights. And, and I feel like that's why for Tank, I'm just never going to be like, you're that guy, bro. Because I don't think he's ever going to fight the best versions of, of the guys that I just mentioned. So I want to bring that up because a lot of people give a lot of praise to Tank, but I just... I see it. I respect it. He's a great fighter. But, um, you know, I, I we want, I mean, Tank Davis has, he's fought really good fights. Santa Cruz, and I forgot the other guy, including Ryan, Rolly Romero. Like, but we haven't seen him fight those big names and, and get, like, the best versions of them. Like I said, Devin Haney, Defimo, and Lomachenko. I, I mean, I think those guys, including Tank, like, those four guys are the best guys, like, out of that group right now. And they need to be fighting each other before they get too old and, you know, and they can make a shit ton of money. 